you know, great things, great things can happen in this church if we are all involved, right? If we are all involved, that's why we have that, that mind that we're all there to serve, great things can happen. Because if everyone here is expecting me to do great things, that we're not going to do as great things if, if it's all me and not everyone here is involved. And that, and in the Bible, great things were never done by just one person. Like we read, we read about one person standing up and being the voice, but then the change actually happens is when everyone gets involved. I mean, Paul never traveled alone. Like there were, there were always companions with him. We think of Paul as this one great man, but we forget often the people that traveled with him and the people that worked with him. And, you know, even though I may be the leader, I may be the spokesperson of this church, um, we will be able to do much greater things if we all play our part. And this is what I think Romans 16 is about. I don't know if you guys have ever read Romans 16, but you know you read Romans 16 and it's basically just a chapter of just random names. And I remember when I first learned about Romans 16 in a church that I first went to, it was sort of preached to me as though it was like, you know, Romans 16 was like the, the hall of just the, 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 the no names kind of thing. It was just like, for some reason, it was just all these people that are mentioned, but we don't know why. But I think I know why they're all mentioned in Romans 16. And I think it's because God is trying to give us a chapter to show us everyone that was involved in the work in the Roman church. And also the companions of Paul to show that he was not alone in his work. And we are never alone in the great things we do. We are all part of it. But let's read Romans 16 and just keep that in mind as we read through it. And you'll see just how much it is about supporting one another and getting involved in the work. I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at uh, Sencrea, that ye receive her in the Lord as becometh saints, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you, for she hath been a succor of many and of myself also. I think succor means to like support. I'm not 100% sure, but it's like you support somebody. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers, see, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who have laid who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. See, look, so these guys not only help Paul, but other churches. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. So they, they played their part. Salute my well-beloved Epineatus, who is the first fruits of Achaia unto Christ. Greet Mary, who bestowed much labor on us. Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen, so his, his, uh, his friends, and my fellow prisoners, so they even went to jail together, who are of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. So Paul is saying here, so it's not just me, there were people doing the work before me. Right? Um, sorry, where was I up to? Ah, Greet and please my beloved in the Lord, salute Urbane, our helper in Christ, and Stachys, my beloved. Salute Apelles, approved in Christ, salute them which are of Aristobulus' household. So salute Herodian, my kinsmen. Greet them that be of the household of Narcissus, which are in the Lord. Salute Tryphena and Tryphosa, who labor in the Lord. Salute the beloved Persis, which labored much in the Lord. Salute Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother and mine. Salute Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermas, Patrobus, Hermes, and the brethren which are, which are with them. Salute Philod. Philologus and Julia and Nereus and his sister and Olympus and all the saints which are with them, salute one another with an holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. So we're seeing here that, you know, we're getting this idea that Rome was a successful church there because look at all the people that were involved. And then we go down to verse 21 and we see all the people that are involved on Paul's side. To Timotheus, my work fellow, and Lucius and Jason and Sosipata, my kinsmen, salute you. I, Tertius, who wrote this epistle, salute you in the Lord. So look, Paul didn't even write some of his own letters. He had people help him do that. Gaius, mine host, and of the whole church, saluteth you. Erastus, the chamberlain of the city, salute you. And Cordus, my brother, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. So there was a lot of people involved in the church at Rome. And there was a lot of people involved um, in the work of Paul. But often we just attribute it to the one person. But we have to realize we all play a part and we all uh, work together to make these great things happen. 
So, you know, often people get the frame of mind and just going back to the serve and the service, but sometimes people will say things like, hey, you know, it'd be great if, if our church did this. Oh, it'd be great if our church did that. And, you know, my answer to that is, yeah, it would be great if our church did that. You know, as long as it lines up with our goals and our, and our, and our, and our objectives here. But often when people say things like that, they say that what they mean by that is it would be great if somebody else did that. You know, it would be great if our church did that, but not me, like somebody else does that. But we have to realize we are the church. You know, and the reason why our church doesn't do things is because nobody in our church is doing it. It's not just, you know, it's not just magically the church does something. The, re the reason why things happen in church is because I'm organizing it. Um, but, you know, if we have other ideas of what we can do, don't let me limit you. Come talk to me about it. If it's something that is aligned with our church's goals and objectives, hey, that's something we can do. And then you can run that project. And, hey, I'll get behind you and I'll promote it from the pulpit and, you know, you'll have my, my blessings on it. But you just can't expect me to do everything just because I'm only one person and I'm already organizing so many things. Um, I, I can't, I, I can only stretch myself so thin. So, I mean, one great thing that we're going to be doing soon is, you know, Brother Kevin, he's going to be um, running like a homeschool uh, like talk. So I don't know what, what's going to become of that. But yeah, that, that's great. You know, like he sees a need in the church. It's aligned with our goals and our objectives. And it's something that he takes on board and takes ownership and makes it happen. So if you have something that you'd like to make happen, then come talk to me about it and we can make it happen. Um, so, you know, so as long as it aligns with our goals and principles. So obviously, you know, we're not going to, if you have an idea to have like a kid's church, we're not going to do that. Uh, or like a kid's bus ministry or something like that. Um, but, you know, you can talk to me about it. That's still fine. I'm not going to be hard on you about it. I'll just say no. <laughs>